Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to read input with text box controls, how to understand variables with numeric data types, how to perform calculations, and how to format our output values specifically for numeric data types. Let's get to it. Okay, so we have our Windows form, and let's go and add a text box. I'm just going to the tool and I'm searching for text box. Dragging and dropping it, and let's add a button and a label as well. Button and the label so I'm just quickly going to resize our label so we can see better as soon as I can locate the font let's make it 12 and we have a button one okay so let's rename our text box txt input a label we will, we will rename label output and our button let's just make it button go quickly change the text if we really want to okay so the plan is I want to display a message I want to type my name in this text box and then when I click the button I want to display a hello message with the name that was entered in the text box. So let's double click our button to open the method. So I'm going to declare a variable now, a string variable. The reason for string is because a text box, um, a text box input value is a string. Um, it's not it, it can be a number as well but the number is entered as a string so what we're going to do is I'm going to say string small letter and I'm going to say s input for string input and for now I'm just going to give it the initial value of nothing next line I'm going to say s input equals what was my textbook's name it's txt input and what do I want from the text box? Well, if you just press the, the dot button or the period on your keyboard, you will see all the, the properties and the, the methods that goes along with the object or the, the, the control you specified before the dot. So every time you, you press a control or you enter a control name and you press a dot and then control space if it doesn't pop up, you will see all the properties and the methods that you can use with that control or object okay so in this case we want the text value so that's at the top right there so i'm just pressing enter and i want the text okay so what i want to display in the label a message with the name in the text box so once again what do i want to do well i want to uh, call the label label output what what do I want to change about the label? Let's see, I'm pressing the dot on my keyboard. Well, we can change the text, the auto size, the name, the visible, the anchor, all those lovely objects and events and uh, methods. Well, in this case, it's the text as well. So let's press text and I want the text equals hello world. My name is, and then I want to plus is input okay sorry if, if i'm going a bit fast let's test it i'm trying to keep the videos as small as possible go hello world my name is philip so it, i took the text value from the text box and i um well I, I i transferred it to the label to the labels text using variables okay um, so if you want to play around a bit with the, the text box controls, you're welcome. There's a nice feature there if you want to uh, make it read only, you can. Or you can enter a password character. If I press a star button, every time somebody types in the text box, it will only be stars. Okay, so that's a needful trick with you when you're working with passwords. That's why it's called a password character. Let's leave it blank, so feel free to go and play with that. Okay, so let's go on with variables. So there are different types of variables, as I'm sure you all know. You have your string, like I showed you. You have your int, which is uh, all the, 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 I call it solid types. Um, it, it, it doesn't have decimals. Um, it's just an integer. 
so like one two or five and your doubles is where your uh, point values come in your decimal values and similar to double is your decimal uh, decimal you work with money but you can use double as well I like to use double because it's just simpler so you can say 50.25 but the thing with decimal you always need to um, press an M after all your oh, so I just need to give some variable names uh, D double and D decimal so just remember when you're using decimal that you need to put an M after your your decimal value but I recommend using a double it's just simpler and more easier and of course then after that you have your boolean values booleans is our true or false my usual value is true but it can be false as well that's the only two values that the boolean can have and of course you have your arrays and stuff but we'll get to that later in the module uh, I think for now this is all you're going to need so let's play around a bit. Let's say, per se, you have an ID number. Now, you would think that your ID number, because there's number in the name, is an integer value. Well, it is not. It is a string value. The same goes for a cell phone number or a landline number or anything of such. Your passport number as well, it is a string value. So let's say for those of you born in 2000 your ID number begins with a zero zero so when I put it in the string value zero zero whenever you were born it's going to display the zero zero but if I go to the integer value and I say zero zero two five four eight one and let's go and print it in the value in the, in the label so now I want to say label outputs text equals s input it's already a string so I don't need to convert it that's weird I don't know why it's doing that Oh, okay. I reassigned it now. I'm not going to delete it. Uh, so you guys can see my my error there. I made an S input. I initialized it at the top, but then I didn't see it. I um, put uh, I equal the the text input text box text into the S input. So when I clicked the go button, there was nothing in S input. That's why it displayed nothing for me. So I'm just going to comment out that line. It's just a logical error there. It should display me that small ID number now. Okay, so we have the zeros with it. Now, if I print the I value, but remember, you are now using a text. Or I want to assign a value to a text variable. And the text variable, as you can see, um, is a string. But what is our I value? Our I value is an integer. So we need to convert the integer to a string so it's easy you just point a point to string with open brackets and the error should go away and let's run it quickly so you can see I initialized my integer value at the zero zero but it doesn't print the zero zero because everything a zero in front of a number means nothing so it, the, the system automatically throws it away so remember if you are uh, working with uh, your ID number even your your student number at the NWU um, is string. It is not um, an integer or a double. It's always string. Uh, any ty type of data like that. Okay, so let's do some calculations. Going to comment this one out as well. You might see now that um, the first line here, I said the hello world um, to be equal to the label output text and underneath it I said the I value should but we never saw this hello world it's because the second line over 
overwritten overwrites the first line even though I didn't comment it out okay so let's do some calculations just going to change this to a smaller number let's make it 25 okay so I'm going to make an int result is equal to my i value and I want to times it with 2 times in G sharp is the asterisk times 2 and let's quickly print it label output dot text uh, no result and remember we need to convert it to a string there you go let's start let's see what's our output it's 50 okay so that's pretty straightforward the same when you divide divide is the forward slash let's go okay but uh, look at this 25 divided by 2 is not 12 it's 12.5 but why do I get the 12 here and not the 0.5 okay so my i value you can see is 25 but when I divide it by 2 it doesn't give me the decimal value of 0.5 with the 12 the reason for that is because you are dividing an integer with an integer which is fine but then you are putting it back into an integer okay so this is going to, going to return a, a decimal value for you but then you are putting it into an integer variable which doesn't allow decimal values and that's why it just throws the decimal value away it doesn't even round up um, to 13 it just completely throws it away and that's what we call this um, div and I'm sure you guys heard of mod as well I'll show you the mod now as well so let's uh, change the double uh, the int to a double and so we run it it's still not yes okay yeah it's still not going to give you the decimal value because it's an integer divided by an integer uh, I think the way to fix it is if I put a zero zero there let's see there you go yeah there's a lot of workarounds to get to that um, I'm actually glad that happened now so when, remember when you divide an integer with an integer you're going to get the integer as a result even though the the the, the, the variable you're, you're putting the result into is a double you're still going to get an integer I wonder if I cast this to a double there are a lot of workarounds so let's see what works and what doesn't work this works as well if you cast your integer value to a double it will um, result in a double as well okay so just keep those in mind it's a very common mistake when you divide an integer with an integer you will always get an integer one of the values needs to be a double for it to return a double okay we can leave that a double now you uh, okay you, you guys are all um, familiar with the plus and the minus okay that's straightforward I want to show you guys the mod now what mod do is my va my i value is now 25 so when mod says to you I'm going to divide 2 into 25 and I will return the rest for you the rest that is um, left over that cannot be divided okay now if my math doesn't um, disappoint me the value should be 1 okay so like I said if you divide 2 into 25 you are going to get to 24 Okay, you can't go higher than 24 because then you're going to go to 26 and we don't have 26 we have 25 so what is you can you calculate it by what's 25 minus 24 it's 1 you will always get the result the remaining result that cannot be divided is the mod okay the div is just the, the usual divided one and I can show you another I'm going to uh, throw that away quickly if I go 20 mod 2 the answer should be 0 because we have su uh, successfully divided 2 into all of the 20 there's nothing left let's make it okay let's just make this a 5 and I'm going to make it 28 let's see what this answer is 
should be 3. Remember, I can go, I can divide 5 into 28 until 25. But what's left over? 26, 27, 28. That's why the mod is 3. This is a very handy trick of, um, to have, so just remember that. Let's see, what can I do next? Okay, so another handy feature. Let's say my i value. Let's say you have an integer value and you want to increase it just by 1. Instead of typing i value equals i value plus 1, you can do that. It will um, result in the same. It's 26, okay? 25 plus 1 is 26. But a much more simpler or easy way is I can just say i value plus plus semicolon and that will automatically increase it with 1. So that's just a neat trick there. Another shortcut, you can say plus equals 1. And will also result in 26. So how to read this, and you can change this operator with anything. I will show you now. So how it reaches, um, reads, is you say, it says take i value plus it with 1 and put the result, the equal sign, back into i value. Okay, once again, take i value plus 1, return it, the, the, the result back into i value. Okay, so you can use this with a minus equals, you can even use it with a mod equals. If i mod equals 25 again with 2, the result will be 1. Okay, so I'm saying it take i value, mod is the percentage sign. Take i value mod it with two and return the result. The, the exclam uh, the equal sign uh, is is for that. Return the result into i value and then of course I print i value. So you can use that with divide as well, and of course your asterisk for your times. Okay, so next let's comment this one out. Now I want to talk to you a bit about formatting your numeric values or any value for that matter. So let's run it quickly. I value it should be 25 and only 25. Okay, 25. Let's say I want to display 25, but it's a currency. So it's around a dollar. It's a currency. It's, it should be in a currency format. This is where this to string comes in very handy. So you can say to string with open bracket, which means I don't care about the, the format, just uh, display it for me. But if I go and say currency, let's see what happens. C stands for currency. I'm saying now put the label outputs text of the I value text, but I want it in currency format. Go. Okay, so it says $1.25. And you can see I've not um, entered the dollar anywhere on my code. I've just put the C for currency. Now the reason it's a dollar and not a rand is because my system is set to the um, to US. Um, so it's going to print the currency format of what your system is on. So um, some of you might be on on rand and it will print um, print rand twenty five. Okay, but as long as you have the C for currency, it is fine. And you can also see that my integer value is I didn't put a decimal value. But because it's in currency format, it did round it to two decimal places automatically. So that's pretty neat. So let's take, okay, I want to print, let's just make my D double a bit longer. I want to show you any tricks. So now I want to um, display D double. Not in currency, okay, well, let's leave it in currency format. But I want it rounded not to two decimal places, to three decimal places. So I say currency with a capital C. 3. So you can see that my double has in fact more than 3 decimal spaces but when I said currency and the second value 3 it means print this d double for me in the currency format but round it to 3 decimal places and let's see if it round it 1 2 3 so it did in fact make the 8 and 9 so it did round up Okay, what else can I show you? Okay, well, um, once again, 
uh, there's a lot more than two decimal spaces here. So let's say I put in a P. A P is going to display a percentage. And you can see the P, um, the percentage, let's see what it did. It took to 12 and it took to 5 and the 6, but not the 8 and the 9. Not quite sure why it did that though. I think it's because of that point value. But if I just have a 12, I stop and I rerun, it should display. I think it's because it's a double S, that's it. If I um, take it back to I value, it should display correctly or not. Not sure why the percentage goes with two values that it shouldn't. I'll get back to you on that. Oh, I think I know what the problem is. Let's make it, uh, let's be a double. Let's start, it. no, no. We need to replace I value with D double. That's better. Okay. So it, um, what the percentage does, it automatically times. I'm actually glad this happened now. So if you have a full number 25 like this, what the percentage does, is, uh, the percentage works the same as on your calculator. So it's going to times it with 100 and then put the percentage. That's why if I, if now I use the double and it's 0 0.12. So it times it with 100 and then it put the percentage. Okay, so just remember that it needs to be, um, if you use the percentage, um, you should have, you should have divided it by 100 so that the percentage can then times the 500 and display the correct percentage value. Okay. Uh, what can I show you more about this do string? The, the string is very powerful. You can, um, I think if I say a fixed value 0.2. Okay, no, I think it's 2.f. 2.f. Or actually just 2f, I think. Yeah. I think it's a point. Okay, last one can only be F2. So this is a fixed value. Uh, so it just displays a fixed value with two decimal points. Okay, so that's all the fixed value does. And I think that's all I wanted to show you guys. Uh, so you guys have the Boolean values, the decimal. I do recommend using double um, instead of decimal. I just think personally it's easier. And I've shown you how to read input from the text box straightforward. Okay, but I haven't shown you. Okay, let's say I want a number entered in this text box. The number is going to, going to be read as text because I set my S input to my TXT input to text. But if I make this input a I value, you will see it immediately gives me an error. So I need to convert this now. Uh, the text, which is a string, I need to convert to an int. So it's int dot parse. And you will see it needs a string value to pass. And then it will be easy to just print the I value. And of course, I need to string it. There you go. So just remember when you are typing in numbers and you want you want to assign it to an integer variable, you need to pass it. And of course, it's not just in dot pass. You can use double dot pass, not with the yeah, okay, you have the text, but then your value, your variable here needs to be a double as well. There you can see your it has an error. You can't um, convert it. So let's make this the double. And no error okay so just remember the left hand and the right hand side must communicate with each other 
And I think that's all I wanted to show you. So uh, good luck.